Assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Dai Abdella, the director of LGBT Outreach Program at Muslims for Progressive Values. In this video, we're going to talk about our understanding of mental illness, how it developed over the centuries, and how it was passed down from generation to generation to our scientific modern times. From the 7th century to modern times, those who suffered from mental illness continued to face strong opposition within their own communities. Jewish, Christian, and Muslim communities held strong beliefs about the mentally ill. Throughout the times, however, there were major improvements in how the mentally ill were treated and cared for. In the Jewish community of the 7th century, mental illness was not associated with a person's essential nature sinning or a lack of relationship with God, as it had been known earlier in their beliefs, but instead they returned to the earlier Greek belief that it was a physical illness initiated by physical causes. In the Christian community, their response to mental illness, which lasted until the Renaissance, also followed the earlier Greek and Roman methodologies associated with physical causes but they also combined it with the concept of evil spirits. Although mental illnesses or mental disorders were quite often related to religion and was thought to be due to sin, other causes due to the daily life activities were being explored, including alcohol consumption, overwork, and major episodes of grief. In the 7th century Muslim community, however, if you happen to be depressed, after a sad or sudden loss, or an unfortunate event, even if this depression took longer than normal, you were told that you are receiving a test from Allah. Similarly, if you were acting out or had episodes of talking to oneself or breaking things, you would also not be considered mentally ill. Instead, people would tell you that you are demonically possessed by jinn, rather than it being a test from Allah. During the Islamic Golden Age, individuals exhibiting unusual behavior or changes in mood were frequently first kept at home accompanied by family members. If the individual's behavior were to worsen, such as physically attacking their family members or exhibit delusional episodes, they were then taken to be seen by a local imam at the mosque. If the imam at the mosque, for example, determined the individual to be mentally ill, they would then be sent to the mental hospital. Now, at this period, we need to also talk about the fact that taking family members to the mental wards were seen as a shameful thing by people. It was a taboo, and this type of thinking would certainly lend itself to the later periods, and into the modern times in the Muslim communities worldwide. In non-Muslim states, particularly in Christian Europe, mental hospitals did not exist as they did in Muslim states, and therefore the classification of what constituted mental illness was not there. Quite often, the mentally ill were sent to workhouses or asylums, some of which were associated with monasteries and others with charities. In these institutions, the mentally ill were usually warehoused to keep them out of public view. If an individual came from a family of means, they would usually receive medical care from a physician, but if they were poor, they did not. During the earlier part of the modern times, as scientific knowledge increased during the 16th and 17th century, Colonialism heavily influenced the ways in which mental illness was classified within diverse societies. Warehousing of the mentally ill became the norm, with various forms of treatments guided by medical professionals still utilizing archaic methods linked to earlier periods. The individual would be institutionalized to avoid community stigma. Due to the stigma associated with mental illness, whether a person was in the Jewish, Christian, or Muslim communities, they all shared in the concept that those who exhibit mentally ill behavior 
had moral and spiritual weaknesses that could only be corrected through divine intervention. Acknowledgement of mental illness would bring shame and isolation to the individual, as well as their family or tribe. It wasn't until the 19th century that the state got involved in changing the standards for these mental institutions. New laws were introduced to institutionalize the mentally ill and to set standards for hospital superintendents. The level of care were improved, but institutions were still overburdened in a complex mix of mental and socioeconomic problems, which brought more and more people into these institutions. In the 1870s in North America, for example, mental illness took on a humanitarian concern and communities became more accepting of the mentally ill. However, these institutions still focused on removing them from the communities in which they were accustomed. Standards for doctors specializing in mental health care evolved into the mental health care providers of today psychologists and psychiatrists, which was a compromise of the original medical-based thinking and the new understanding of mental health. Although Western psychology has made great scientific strides in the last century and has pretty much separated itself from its Judeo-Christian background, psychologists in the Muslim world are still faced with the struggles to reconcile faith and science. In many parts of the Muslim world, Psychologists are still using religion-based understanding of the self, of what constitutes mental illness, and how to overcome them. This, perhaps, has to do with the general religious influence in many Muslim societies, as well as the fact that large Muslim societies like Pakistan or Iran still have a specific Islamic identity in their basic understanding of their society. In conclusion, we can understand that due to the high level of communal stigma associated with mental illness, individuals, families, and large tribal groups would hide the fact that there was someone who had a mental disorder. This stigma could be quite influential in how family groups gained or lost association based upon the mental disorders they may have suffered. We continue to see this phenomenon within modern-day Jewish, Christian, and Muslim communities, although it has become more commonplace to discuss the issues of mental illness. There remains a false equivalency that mental illness is a weakness, and therefore the individual's contribution to society should not be expected. Nevertheless, the secular Western understanding of psychology, through research, has definitely made important contributions in changing some of these long-held ideas, at least in Western society, which, in turn, influenced Muslim societies.